As the third oldest city in Canada, Montreal's architectural history stretches over almost four centuries. Ooh, it's nice over here. We're walking through this beautiful like park, so pretty. We now find ourselves in the heart of downtown Montreal, Dorchester Square. This site was designated a cemetery in 1799 and sadly became overridden with bodies due to the 1832 and 34 cholera epidemic. It was decided to exhume the bodies and rebury them on Mount Royal. Dorchester Square began as a quiet green space, but by the late 19th and early 20th century, many monumental buildings such as the Romanesque Windsor train station, the Renaissance-style Mary Queen of the World Cathedral, and the Beaux-Arts Sun Life Building were added. This transformed the square into a vital urban environment and major pedestrian thoroughfare. Oh my god, Montreal is so freaking pretty. Like, really, really pretty. When the Sun Life Building was inaugurated in 1933, it remained for the next 29 years the largest edifice in the British Empire. What that doesn't suggest was the 20-year process it took to complete construction. In the year 1914, the directors of the Sun Life Building, which was actually located in the banking district, so around St. Jacques Street, they decided to move away from that area. There was a boom going on, and so they decided to move north into an area that was a little bit less developed, which is where we are right now. It was built in three stages. The first one was between 1914 and 1918, and that was where we saw the southwest portion of the building completed, right down here at the corners of Metcalf and René Lévesque. Twenties were very prosperous, and so they went and built further north as well as further up. And so at this point, we now have a 26-story tower, which is incredibly imposing for the time. The building is tiered like a wedding cake, and at the time of its completion was the tallest structure in the Commonwealth. The facade has a row of Corinthian columns which support a shallow set portico acting as the main entrance. Additional rows of columns are also located higher up the building, along with balustrades and a decorative cornice topping the tiers. It continues to operate as an office building in Montreal's downtown core. We're now in the original lobby of the Sun Life Building. And as you can see from some of the architectural features, stairs are reminiscent of the British Empire Union Jack. Nothing in this lobby was changed over the years. It, the materials are all from the original construction. This has got to be the most beautiful elevator I have ever seen in my life. First of all, look at the material that the elevator is made of. It's simply incredible. I mean, you have the seals from each province on there. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this has got to be the elevator of all elevators. Wow, look at this. This is a king's elevator. I've got to tell you, this is the nicest uh, freight service elevator I've ever seen, actually. Brass. Beautiful, eh? Yeah. All brass. It's not just that they're brass, it's that they're amazingly shiny, you know? That's what's really incredible. I've never seen brass so mirror-like. We're now standing on the balcony of the first floor in the original building and you can notice the uh, black marble columns from Italy and the gold leaf uh, details on each column. This is where Sun Life's policy holders would come and pay their premiums and the bank, uh, who's been a tenant in this building for many years, has invested a considerable amount of money in restoring this space. If we then continue on to later on into the Second World War, it served as a, as a location where Great Britain would actually send a lot of its important documents. Sun Life Building played a very important role during World War II in what was known as Operation Fish. The British Empire transferred all of its marketable securities to the building, were estimated to be worth about $5 billion in those years. They were all created in fish, fish boxes stored in the third basement vault where 24 Mounties mounted guard all day. If we take a look at the safe, just the door itself, 30 tons in weight, and this portion of the floor actually can go up and down. 2018 marked the 100th anniversary of the first phase of the Sun Life Building. Over the years, Bentel Kennedy and the co-ownership have maintained the heritage portion, and the exterior lighting project is no different. The Sun Life Building represented a fantastic opportunity. It's built a massive stand-stead granite, which really captures the light, so there's a little bit of scintillation of the light kind of bouncing off the stone. This building really glows. 
I think the Sun Life Building is a Montreal landmark. People forget the Sun Life Building was part of the Montreal landscape way before some of its current icons. I think it's architectural and historical testimony to the city of Montreal and also its owners.